Well, here at the AHA, um, we had the release of the long-awaited uh, ACC AHA cholesterol guidelines. Uh, this is an update from the five years ago guideline, and a lot has happened. And so it incorporates all of the non-statin therapies into the new guideline recommendations. And so we see the addition for the secondary prevention of using a, a threshold of an LDL of greater than 70 milligrams per deciliter, uh, or 1.8 millimoles, to first add azetamibe, and in the very high-risk patients, to add a PCSK9 inhibitor. Um, they were uh, making value statements to say that you should do it in that order to try and save a health system uh, money, which is sort of a new thing and a guideline, but, but reasonable. Um, and so I think we were all very happy to see the formal guideline to have the stepwise approach, focusing on trying to make sure patients are managed um, you know, to get their LDLs down below 70. Um, you know, there, there's always a lot of debate of, of did they talk about goals and, and didn't specifically, but I think the, the guideline follows the evidence very carefully uh, to say that we have trials, uh, you know, adding on therapies uh, with patients with LDLs above 70. The other big thing in this guideline was a, an advance in the primary prevention, where, of course, you start with the ASCVD risk score or other risk score to look at the spectrum. But they included in the sort of uncertain group, the borderline risk, the notion of doing a calcium score to try and help determine if there is or isn't atherosclerosis. And so if you get a score of zero, which, which can happen, uh, that then you'd emphasize lifestyle, whereas one to 100, you'd think about a statin indefinitely if the calcium score were above 100. And so that's a very powerful tool. There have been multiple studies over the, over the recent years supporting this, and it's really helpful in the guidelines, especially for younger patients where the calculated risk of, of an event in the next 10 years is low, and yet you have a sense they have multiple risk factors. You want to try and get therapy going early. And so the guideline really is very supportive of that as a marker and a, and a few others. So I think a, a nice advance in the primary prevention uh, management as well. So there's lots to digest in there and we'll be looking forward to uh, really digging into all of the recommendations but I think can really help uh, manage patients to uh, use cholesterol lowering as a way to uh, improve outcomes.